in the in the study of the wisdom of the Quran and the study of the lessons drawn from the Quran I, I tell you the more I study it the more I realize we haven't even scratched the surface there are so many gems and so many treasures that need to be extracted from this book simply by reflection and when I try to study this stuff with you know with uh, tafasir and other lexical resources and things like that I realize the things that people could use immediately the practical stuff it's scattered in volumes and volumes of books you read four pages and then you read one line that's like epic you're like oh snap why did I have to read four pages of nothing for this you know but it's there but it's so scattered and it's, a, a, it's an undertaking in and of itself to pull that stuff out and put it in one place so that we can have, we can extract these gems, you know? Because so, for so many, the Quran simply became an academic exercise. It's a living text. It's giving us advice for what we're going through right now. The other reason I gave you this particular example is because when people think of the attack of shaitan, they think of uh, drugs, alcohol, you know, partying, illicit relationships. That's where shaitan's at work. Let me tell you, shaitan's at work from the top to the bottom. Like, you know, some people start thinking, well, if I become a good person, I start praying and stuff, or I start learning Islam and talking to people about Islam, then shaitan will leave me alone because, you know, I'm good now. Uh, no, the worst attacks of shaitan are mentioned in the Quran for people who are trying to go on the straight path. The people who are headed down the wrong path are on basically cruise control from shaitan. He says, Jao Munne, you, you have your fun. You're already on cruise control heading towards, you know, hellfire. So I'm going to work on these guys over here and help them make a U-turn. You understand? And any of you turns around and then shaitan comes back at you once again. <laughs>